Hey there, we haven't talked in a few days. Let's take a look at the waiver wire next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Wednesday, September 14th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White. And let's start off with some waiver wire pitchers. We have a group of three. Trevor Rogers was strong once again. He looks like he's back, Scotty. Up against the Rangers, six and a third, two runs, nine strikeouts, 18 swinging strikes. He's got a 2.98 ERA since uh, in three starts since returning from the IL. John Gray made his return. He was against the Marlins. He went three and two thirds, one unearned run with five strikeouts. And then Bailey Falter had another solid outing. He was also at the Marlins. Six innings, one run, four strikeouts. How do you rank those three? Falter, John Gray, and Trevor Rogers. I would rank, rank them. Trevor Rogers, followed by John Gray, followed by Bailey Falter. I, I, Falter I, I, is easy, easily last place here because it, he may only have one start left with Zach Wheeler on the verge of returning, and it's against the Braves. And I think Falter's the least talented of the three, though he's obviously been pretty impressive recently. Uh, I'll put Rogers ahead of Gray, both because Gray is still building up. He only went three and two-thirds innings in his return from the IL. He didn't have any sort of rehab assignment after a long layoff. I think he's good, but it, does he have enough time to build up quickly enough to to make a substantive difference in fantasy, especially since this is already a two-star week for him, so there may not be any more of those in his future. But also, I ranked Trevor Rogers number one because he was amazing in this start on Monday. It was it was the start I was waiting to see to be convinced that he was all the way back. He got a ton of whiffs on both the fastball and changeup. Pretty good Rangers lineup he beat. And his three starts since returning from the IL have been his best all season. So I think Rogers is back to form. It's nice to see. Would you drop Reed Detmers for Trevor Rogers? And John Gray. Yes. yes, I would drop Detmers for both. Detmers has given up four runs and three of four now. And, and this was supposed to be a, a gimme matchup for him uh, going against a Guardians lineup that's the second worst against left-handed pitchers. So don't have a lot of trust in Detmers right now. All right, waiver wire pitchers part two. More so streamers in deeper leagues, but Adrian Sampson outdueled Jacob DeGrom here on Tuesday. He went six shutout with three strikeouts, and I'm not convinced that he's that great of a pitcher, but it looks like he is at the Marlins and the Pirates next week, so just fantastic matchups. Same thing with his teammate Javier Assad. He went six innings, one run, six strikeouts at the Mets, and looks like he is at the Pirates next week as well. And then a Diamondback, Ryan Nelson. He was very impressive once again against the Dodgers. He went six shutout with six strikeouts. And the only problem with him is that he has the Padres this weekend. You know, if you start him on a two-star week, then you're already locked in. But he's at the Dodgers again next week. So tougher matchup there. Uh, Scott, what do you think about these three in deeper leagues? Samson, Assad, and Ryan Nelson. Well, I'd like to get excited about Ryan Nelson because this has been a great uh Couple first couple of turns here, shutting down two great offenses, the Padres and especially the Dodgers. But the fact he's going to face them again in his next two starts, that doesn't work in his favor. They've already seen him. And uh, you imagine things are going to go better. Uh, also, Nelson, not great numbers in the minors this year. Now, it was double AA, A, triple A for the Diamondbacks, were really hitter friendly. And, and that probably had something to do with it, having seen him pitch now in the majors. I mean, the stuff looks legit. Ryan Nelson. If nothing else, he's he's put himself on the map as a potential sleeper for next year, but I don't know that I'm ready to trust him. And those other two, Adrian Sampson, uh, Javier Assad, I just even though the matchups are good, I you know they're not going to give you strikeouts, and uh, I, I'd have to be really desperate for volume, I think, to use them. All right, let's wrap up with one waiver wire outfielder, Oscar Gonzalez, who we talk about quite a bit, but he just remains hot. He went two for four with his eighth home run, and he's only 43% rostered. He's got seven games next week. Scott, would you drop Corbin Carroll, who is not playing against lefties? He's got tough matchups next week for an Oscar Gonzalez. 
I would. Yeah. Oscar Gonzalez has been productive recently. The power is beginning to show up more. He's elevating better. And I mean, Corbin Carroll is a great talent, but the, the Diamondbacks are obviously looking to preserve his at bats here down the stretch, not wanting him to exceed 130, wanting him to have rookie eligibility next year so they could possibly score a draft pick based on that. And uh, they're, they're sitting him against left-handers as a way of doing that. Bunch of lefties on the schedule for the Diamondbacks. Tough matchups anyway. Yeah, give me Oscar Gonzalez over Corbin Carroll. All right, yeah. Hard to argue with that. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. We'll be back again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 